Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this Early Childhood Public Lecture, the fifth in a series organized by SUSS. My name is Sam Chi Wa. I'm an associate professor from the SR Naden School of Human Development, and I will be the facilitator for this public lecture. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce to you our speaker today, Dr. Yoichi Sakakihara. He hails from Japan and he's delivering this lecture from Japan. Now, Dr. Sakakihara is an admiratus professor at the Ochano Mizu University in Japan. He's also the director of Child Research Net Japan or CRN Japan. Professor Sakakihara Hara first graduated as a medical doctor from the University of Tokyo. He then went into specializing his practice in pediatric and developmental neurology, and in particular, in the treatment of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, Asperger's syndrome, and other developmental disorders and neuroscience. Professor Sakakihara will be speaking on Predictor of Quality of Life, or QOL, and Resilience of Children in Asian, Asian Countries During the COVID-19 Pandemic. So without further ado, let's welcome Professor Yoichi Sakakihara. Professor, over to you. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> and good Good afternoon. I think it is now 2, 2 p.m. in Japan and maybe 1, 1 a.m. just after lunchtime in Singapore. And it is uh, my great pleasure to <clears throat> be invited to give lecture at the Singapore University of Social Science. And I'm very grateful for the kind invitation of Professor uh, Samchiwa. And I, I met her several years ago in, in probably in Indonesia. And since then, we have been communicating and I, it's my great honor. And also I'm very grateful for the preparation made by who uh, I think and I, I am grateful for her deliberate preparation for this meeting. So <clears throat> uh, as I have been introduced by Dr. Samchiva, I'm a pediatrician basically, but at the same time, I'm very interested in the development of children. My specialty as a pedi pediatrician is pediatric neurology. And even now, I'm almost 70, no, 70 years old, you know, to be honest. I am also, I am seeing patients uh, three times a week. And many of the patients are patients with developmental problems, mainly like autism and learning disabilities and attention deficit hyperactivity disorders. Since you know, I moved to Ochanobi University after medical school, I, uh, I, I got interested in uh, developmental psychology and also pedagogy. And uh, my department in uh, Ochanobi University is specialized in the education for uh, kindergarten teachers and also uh, developmental psychologists. So, uh, uh, and also during uh, the, the, when I was in the, in, in, in Ochano University, I have been involved in several uh, government projects to see the relation between the environment and child development. That is my main concern and interest right now. So uh, today's talk is about the resilience and QOL in the era of uh, 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 COVID-19. The title is Predictor of Children's Quality of Life and Resilience During COVID-19 Pandemic in Asian Countries. And some of, you, some of you are not very familiar with the terminology like resilience and QOL. I'm going to explain it a little bit. And then uh, I, I'm going to talk about my own survey with the collaboration with many Asian uh, doctors. Uh, my sound is clear. Can, can you hear me? Okay, so I like to share my slide. Let me uh, hear. 
Oops. I do it. Mm, yeah. And then, wait a moment. Can you see the slide? Okay. So today's talk is the predictor of children's quality of life and resilience uh, during COVID-19 pandemic in Asian countries. Must go, wait a minute. Sorry, I, it's, it's a kind of funny one, it's moving. Okay, yeah. Okay, this is a kind of schematic presentation of the kind of the scene of child development. Uh, the development of children can be conceived, conceived from several different perspectives. Uh, I think most visible development is a cognitive development and physical development. We can understand the children's cognitive development by, by you know, letting them to speak and letting them count and then letting to run and, and climb chairs. You know, it is very easy to see these uh, cognitive uh, development and physical development. Now these, uh, as you see in the right side, I, I think uh, there is connection between the brain region responsible for these development. And, uh, and this is, uh, you know, connected by allos. Cognitive, cognitive development uh, and physical development is governed by the cerebral, cerebral cortex in the surface layer of the brain. But as you see, the social and emotional development is, I think, governed by a different region of the brain. That has made the situation a little complicated. If everything is, you know, governed by cortical development, the, the cerebral cortex, it is very easy to link between like cognitive development, physical development, and social emotional development. But as you see, social emotional development, uh, the center for this development is located in deep in the brain. One part is known as amygdala. Some of you might know this name, amygdala, this orange one. And then social development is also controlled by prefrontal cortex. It's a part of the complex, but the interplay between prefrontal cortex and amygdala is the key center for the development of social and emotional development. And, and I put resilience in the bottom. It's a very difficult, uh, I think, constitute, a psychological constitute to explain. So, uh, I'm going to explain resilience and, and uh, QL uh, from now. And before touching upon the Q, uh, QL and resilience, I'm going to talk about the common notion about child development. Uh, Well-known phrases of the nature of child development is written in yellow. Children development is robust. Robust means that very strong and very it is very difficult to destroy. It's a very strong one. So everybody think and believe that the children's development is robust, but truth is not true. That, that is not true. The truth is that the development of children is robust only when their environment is safe and relieved, anzen anshin in Japanese. Otherwise, their development is quite vulnerable. So this is a picture of very, maybe some of you are very familiar with that, refugee people, children, and famine and starving, and they cannot eat enough food. And also now we are suffering, well, it's almost over, but pandemic. These are the, we call it adversities. Adversity is a very hard time for children, evil, and very perilous time. And, and, and the left for a kind of global pan, global adversities. But on your right, you can see the body of the children with a lot of scratch and blemish. And this is abuse, child abuse. 
Child abuse is a local and kind of personal individualized adversity for children. So children are living in a world with full of adversities. We all realize that, especially this hard time, pandemic, many refugees, uh, you know, in the world. And uh, I'm sorry for this messy uh, slide, but this is the list of common adversities in children, and mainly by the study of uh, Dr. Felici. I think he, I think, enlisted the most common type of uh, uh, these adversities uh, experienced during childhood. Uh, from top, abuse, of course, abuse is one of the most uh, kind of difficult and uh, very grave uh, adversity for children. And neglect, neglect is more common than abuse. Neglect is also adversities. And household dysfunction is also a very important uh, adversity. You can see that the children are deserted. They are not loved by their children. Uh, and sometimes the household members have some mental problem. And, and in the United States, like you see in the middle, household members, uh, had a problem, uh, problem with drinking and using drugs. And also they are uh, incarnate in jail and prison. And there's other adversities like the divorce and also uh, the bullying at school. It's very common in Japan. It's a kind of very difficult social problem in these times. And also the Domestic violence, just witnessing the uh, domestic violence is uh, adversity. The children will harm by this. And children in foster care or children uh, without parents. Of course, the some of the refugee people, children, they are suffering from many uh, difficult adversities. And you might think that these adversities are seen only in developing countries. No, it is everywhere. You might think that Japan is one of the one of the wealthier countries, but this is the very well-known children's restaurant movement in Japan, Kodomo Shokudo. These children have no food, no enough food for eat in Japan. And Although they have enough food, they should eat a meal alone. Their parents are both working or single parent and cannot have uh, meal time uh, with children. The, this is a statistic. Now 60%, one out seven Japanese children are in poverty level. And some of them cannot afford enough food, as you see there. And then some of them cannot eat together with their family members. We call it koshoku, eating alone. Eating alone is a very, very common thing in, uh, in Japanese household in these days. So in order to, I think, mitigate, mitigate this problem, the uh, many organizations, uh, mainly NPO, has started the movement called children's restaurant, kodomo shokudo. You can see the graph on your right side. This is the number of these children and restaurants in Japan only. Now there are 6,000 children and restaurants in Japan. This means that so many children cannot have good uh, meal time. So this is one of the adversities. So these adversities has a lot of bad outcome on their life. This is a paper, a uh, recently published paper, the systemic review of pediatric health outcome associated with childhood adversity. adversity. So you can see in the right side, because of the, these adversities, it will cause delay in cognitive development, asthma infection, somatic complaint like headache, stomachache, 
and then sleep disruption, an elevated cortisol level. This means that the stress level is high. And also alteration of the immune system and stress-related telomere erosion. You know telomere, telomere is a part of the chromosome that will decide the number of maximum cell division. By adversities, this kind of medical and physical life, a structure of, of the cell will be altered. The, the telomere uh, erosion means that telomere is getting shorter and that uh, will make it is difficult to sell, to divide further. These things have been proven. So this uh, adversity has a lot of effect on child health. And also, it is the, the children who experience the adversity would later, I think, develop many disease, mainly chronic disorders, like here. Uh, in, in the United States, the childhood adversity alone account for 50% of United States annual death. Annual death is due to like heart disease, cancer, suicide, unhealthy behavior, drinking, and et cetera, et cetera. These behavior and chronic disorders has brought about by the uh, influence of child adversity. So I think child, child, childhood adversity experience is not a short-term problem. It's a long-term, lifelong problem in all the older people, including us. So those who experience child adversity uh, would have a shorter lifespan. It is all, all, already, uh, I think, uh, approved. So the the eradicate childhood adversity is one of the main goal of the uh, society right now. So I come back to the resilience. What is resilience? Some of my, some of you might know this one. This is the definition of resilience by uh, Dr. Unger. This is a very well known, uh, uh, I think, definition. I'm going to read it. Resilience is defined as follows. In the context of exposure to significant adversity, here comes the adversity. Resilience is very much strongly connected to adversity. Resilience is both the capacity of individuals to navigate their way to the psychological, social, cultural, and physical resources that sustain their well being. Here comes well being and their capacity individually and collectively to negotiate for these resources to be provided in culturally meaningful ways. This is the definition of resilience. And then uh, many, many, I think, research have been done on resilience. And then uh, this is uh, one of the leaders in the resilience of children, uh, Dr. Mustin. Uh, she also wrote, uh, you can see in the bottom, resilience science. <laughs> Interesting, I think something up. Anyway, resilience science suggests that human resilience is common, dynamic, generated through myriad interaction of multiple systems from the biological to the social cultural and mut mu mutable given strategic targeting and, and timing. So resilience is, is a quite important, I would say not a psychological, but you know, it's a very uh, important constituent. Uh, and also it is a part of child development. And Mastin has developed, uh, and Hagel uh, Unga has developed this. Uh, it is also very messy. This is the question, to measure, uh, okay, to to measure the resilience of children, it uh, is made up of seventeen simple questions. So this is so messy. I write it down. It is a little larger and 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 easy to 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 read. And then this is a question. Uh, and then this is a um, question. And then the maybe. 
my their parents will answer my child cooperate shares with people around him her very much uh to some extent and by using like scale we can measure the uh re level of uh resilience in this children and then my child believes getting an education doing well in school is important to him in some part of the world children are not sent to school they should work at home so so these children uh resilience might be lowered by this my child know how to behave act in different situations my child has a parent caregiver who knows where she uh, uh she is and what she is doing most of the time this is the kind of the parents are guardian they must know what their child's children are doing neglect neglected children do not have this guardian they are letting alone without any care my child has a parent caregiver who knows a lot about him i think parents should know about the nature of their child my child had enough to eat at his her home when he she is hungry as you see in japan some children even in J japan cannot do this they they should eat alone or sometimes they must go to children's restaurant to have meal with other children and and, and adults my child talks to his her family about how she feels this is the uh, communication between children and parents and my child feels supported by his her friends friendship is very important later i'm going to touch upon about the uh, the importance of children during covid 19 uh, that importance of friend friend uh, during covid 19 and my child feels uh, he fit uh, at school so in Japan, the, the big social problem is that children cannot enjoy school. They uh, do not go to school. We call it school refusal. But this, uh, the number is quite large right now. My child has a family caregiver who cares about him uh, when times are hard. Now we are suffering from hardship, pandemic. So the care of parents is quite important which i'm going to show the result of our survey anyway and my child has friends who care about him when times are hard or oh, this is one uh the same thing my child is treated fairly fairly treatment is also very important some children are rejected segregated uh in many parts of the country in japan in the world in japan I think this segregation is quite common, especially among those with developmental disabilities. This is my serious concern in these days. My child is given chance to show others that she is growing up and can do things by himself. Independence. My child likes the way his her family caregivers celebrate things. These are kind of festival and cultural event is a kind of uh, bonding effect on children so this social cultural uh, atmosphere also is very important my child has chances to learn things that will be useful when she is older so meaning of education they i think learning is sometimes difficult but if the child know the meaning of, of of learning i think they can be successful my child feels safe when she is with uh, with his her family safety as i said that safe feeling safety security is one of the most fundamental i think aspect of uh, child uh, resilience so i'm going to change uh, the, the i'm going to explain quality of life quality of life has been used quite extensively and this is the who's uh, i think uh, concept uh, the QOL is an individual perception of their position in life in the context of the culture and value system in which they live and in relation to their goals, expectation, standards, and concern. So quality of life is uh, almost 
almost equivalent to well-being. Uh, I think both words are used uh, in, in the same meaning. And then there are uh, questionnaire rating system to measure the well-being of children. So this is quite uh, well uh, known one. This is a kid Kindle developed in Germany. And this is made up of about uh, 18 uh, questions. And uh, as you see in the right side of the page, the physical well-being. And this is a very simple one, only made up of four questions. My child felt ill, my child had a headache, my child was tired, my child uh, felt strong and so forth. And then second comes emotional well-being. My child had fun. My child didn't feel much like doing anything. My, ch my child felt alone and so forth. And self-esteem. Uh, self-esteem is also a very important psychological constituent. And then my child was proud of him. My child felt on top of the world. Uh, my child had a lot of good things. These are kind of the energy for children to overcome hardship, the self-esteem. And then family comes. Family is also a very important part of children's quality of life. And to others, social contact. It's a friend, number of friend. And, and then finally comes kindergarten or school. School or kindergarten is uh, one of the major environment for children. So the school and, and, and uh, kindergarten's environment is quite important to maintain the quality of life of children. So comes the, uh, uh, the, our survey. We have conducted the survey uh, uh, two years ago. We started this one. And this uh, uh, collaboration was made possible by the collaboration of uh, the researchers, teachers, and, and, and from eight countries. You can, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't put the name of the people, but you know, they are made up of eight countries. Uh, from China, Philippines, Taiwan, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore. Maybe uh, some of you might know. There is the, in Singapore, you can see the face of uh, Christian Chen, and, uh, and I'm in the middle, and also from Malaysia, the Amina, and, and so forth. And uh, this is the collaboration of these uh, uh, scholars and teachers. Uh, we have started the survey two years ago, and we just completed this year. So the reason to start that collaboration is, as you know, uh, is the occurrence of this pandemic. The surge of this pandemic has prompted us to do something for the children. So this is one of the paper, uh, recent paper. This is the global prevalence of depression and anxiety symptoms in children and adolescents during COVID-19. This is a meta-analysis. So they conclude uh, the, the age of the children range is from four to 18, I think. So depression and anxiety symptoms are seen in 25.2% and 20% respectively. So one out of four children might have some signs of depression, not a real depressive disease, depression, but depressive symptoms. And also 20%, one out of five, uh, shows the uh, symptoms of anxiety. And this is a meta-analysis and half of them are from East Asia, mainly from China and some from Japan. So this is a kind of uh, worldwide phenomena. So, one out of five and one out of four children are suffering from anxiety and depression. So we must do something. So we, I think these members uh, made a Zoom meeting quite often. And then what can I do? Can, what can we do? Then this is the research question we reached during the discussion. What are the factors that determine children's happiness and resilience in the time of COVID-19? COVID-19 is one of the adversities. And then, uh, in fact, 
many children are suffering from mental condition, mental disease. So uh, we should seek, we should look for the factor that has uh, influence on uh, children's life. And we will clarify this through the three environmental perspective family. Child care facility, families, child care facilities mean that kindergarten school and government society. And then uh, we are going to look at the relation between resilience and happiness. These two, uh, I think, uh, concepts seem to be similar, but they're different. Uh, well, I'm going to explain later. So in order to start the study, uh, we set uh, the, our goal like this. Among many abilities and skills that facilitate young children sound development, resilience has emerged as an important psychological constituent, especially in confronting the unpredictable future of the world, such as COVID-19 pandemic and global warming also, uh, maybe refugees also. And numerous reports, we have studied the, the previous report and then it was found that numerous reports on the increased stress and mental illness of children during COVID-19 pandemic have prompted us to launch collaborative survey on the factor affecting children resilience among Asian countries. What are factors has influence on resilience and cure? And using the network researchers, as I said, CLNA, we have conducted a questionnaire survey. Among mother of five years old children and also seven years old children, it's not listed here. So this is the uh, <coughs> contents of the questionnaire. It's a very lengthy que questionnaire. And you can see the research hypothesis on top. What are the factors that determine the happiness and resilience of the children uh, at the time of COVID-19? And then is child resilience related to his ha, happiness or being? And these, uh, I think, uh, uh, the factor listed below are the type of the items, questions we asked. We ask mother's parenting style. Well, in the left, you know, column, demographic factor, of course, gender, siblings, and then also situation COVID nineteen in the area where the mothers and children are living, because the situation different among country at the time. And as a parameters, we, uh, we have chosen mother's parenting style, which I'm going to explain a little later, a mother's perception and anxiety about COVID-19. Some mothers are very much worried about the consequence of COVID-19, but some are not. So I, I like to know the relation between the, the mothers uh, these uh, feeling and children resilience and, and, and QL and spousal support and children daily life and play. And then you can see in the, the, in the bottom right side in, in, in green, education and care and care child caring support. We also ask the, the mother's satisfaction about the service of the child care in their region. And then in the right side, dependent variable, we measure children resilience and also children happiness. This is subject and method. And mothers with children age five who are attending kindergarten and seven years old children attending elementary schools. And then participating countries, I mentioned it earlier already, eight countries, Japan, China, Malaysia, Taiwan. And Singapore is, 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 I think, printed in, in red. Uh, and then number of subjects, number of children, and means mothers, and 1,975 mothers uh, of five years old, and then 1,370, 1,372 mothers of seven years old. And this is a questionnaire survey, either by paper questionnaire or online. And then it was done last year. Oh, last year, August, November. But we started preparation of the, the survey uh, about two years ago. And then content of questionnaire, and I already showed that there are so many, but you know, main one is children's QL using Kindle uh, rating scale, and then resilience, 
and parenting attitude, quality of ECC care, spousal support, and secure feeling about COVID-19. So this is a summary of the results, which I'm going to you know, come back later, but I'm going to read it anyway. This is a global and general result of the survey. And mothers of 1973 children aged five in China, Philippines, Indonesia, Japan, Malaysia, Singapore, Taiwan, Thailand, returned the questionnaire. After factor analysis and reliability testing, we generated seven synthetic variables. We combined these, uh, uh, I think, uh, questions, variables, and make uh, generated synthetic variables and calculate the correlation co coefficient among them using SPS software. I'm going to show the, the picture anyway. And significant correlation were found between resilience and happiness. Happiness means the QOL. In, in this context. So resilience is closely related to happiness. Then, and resilience and responsive parenting, there is a high correlation between them. I'm going to explain what is responsive parenting. And then for most of the teachers, uh, it's very good findings, ECC quality and support have a positive uh, relation, association between the happiness and resilience. And then uh, <clears throat> non-punitive parenting, which I'm going to you know touch upon later. Non-punitive, punitive parenting is a harsh parenting, uh, is not good. But non-punitive parenting, do not scold, do not punish, that it has a good relation between happiness and resilience. And uh, and then I did a uh, kind of a little complicated uh, statistic analysis, uh, the multiple regression analysis, and resilience was predicted by happiness. This means that the if the children is happy, their resilience is, tend to, is higher. And also, uh, <clears throat> and, and ECC quality and support. Uh, also, resilience was predicted by ECC quality and support. If this care, the quality of care at the kindergarten is high, children's resilience is high. It's a very, very, uh, I'm very glad to know this one, you know, and some of you are very glad to know that. Your support has a very good effect on children's uh, resilience. And then it was suggested that EC's quality and support is associated with children's resilience. And conversely, just, you know, the opposite. Uh, happiness was predicted by resilience. So there's a, both directions from happiness to resilience, resilience to happiness. Resilient children tend to be happier. So this is the very complicated association. This is statistical association, the correlation we call it. And then this is five years old. And then you can see the uh, arrows, uh, both, both head arrows, and then the number indicate the, the uh, degree of this association. You can see that QOL and residence, the association and correlation is 0 0.590 plus. It's a very strong association. And also between QOL and, and, uh, and then quality of ECC, 0 0.303, and also quality of ECC and resilience. So quality of ECC, the quality of childcare at the kindergarten has a very good association uh, between QOL of children and QOL resilience. Another thing on your left bottom, less parenting attitude. The responsive attitude has a positive association and correlation with resilience, 0 0.277, responsible. And non-punitive, this is the, just a reverse of the punitive. Non-hush uh, parenting has a good association with QOL, 0 0.26263. Well, this is to, I think, you know, we can uh, analyze much further, but this is the general view of the result of the survey. We did the same thing in seven years old. I, I, I have no time to explain it, but, you know, uh, there is uh, also 
uh, very close association between QL and resilience. Resilience and QL, both sides. And also quality education. This is seven years old. They are not going to kindergarten. They are attending primary school, elementary school. The, uh, the resilience and QL has a very good association, the correlation between the, the quality of education or service, uh, resilience 3.14, and, and then QL 206. This means that the children attending school are protected by this fact. Attending school, uh, I think, has some influence, good influence on resilience and, and QL of children. Uh, same thing about the responsive parenting and, and also uh, resilience. There is a strong association, 0.456. So this is a regulation analysis. This is association uh, analysis cannot say the direction from which side to which side. So QOL and, and resilience, which is the dependent uh, variable, that which is the independent variable. But by regulation analysis, we can see a quasi, uh, not real uh, causal relations, but I think we can see the, the prediction uh, direction. You can see that this is five, uh, five years old. QOL will predict the resilience of the children, 0 0.534. Quality of, high quality of ECC also uh, predicted the higher resilience. Emotional support by the spouse. Oh, this is negative. I, I, I'm probably, this is one of the most mysterious points. Anyway, uh, it said that spousal emotional support as a negative effect on the resilience of children. As a father, I'm a little bit, you know, uh, sad to this result anyway. And responding, responsive parenting, although the number is low, there is a positive. And then secure feeling toward COVID-19 has a very weak, uh, I think, predictors of resilience and so forth. And for the seven years old, basically, oh, Oh, this is for the five years old. The direction is from resilience to QL. You can see that the, 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 the resilience can predict the QL of children quite much. And non-punitive parenting and responsive parenting both has a positive uh, predictor of QL. And then emotional support by spouse in this time has a positive effect. So, <clears throat> Now, the parenting is a quite important environment for children. So this is a paper from China, and then they look at the mental health, mental health of parents and preschool age children during COVID-19 pandemic. The medi mediating role of harsh parenting child sleep disturbance. So this is a quite unique uh, paper looking at the effect of harsh parenting and deprivation of sleep on children's, uh, I think, um, think well-being. So uh, you can see harsh parenting, that means the punitive, you know, uh, punish and spanking. Parenting and child sleep problem were significant mediators within the association. This study indicates that association between parental well-being index and child mental health during the pandemic and underlying mechanism and has important implications for reducing parent and child mental health problems. The if the mothers and, and parents has a very low QOL, they tend to do a harsh parenting. They, they will scold the children. They are very strict uh, to children. That has caused the children's QOL and resilience lower. So this is, uh, a very interesting paper on the effect of parenting on child well-being. So parenting style can be divided in many ways. You know, I, I think it's kind of arbitrarily, but you know, uh, I I, I classified it the wrong parenting and punitive parenting, called parenting. And the punitive parenting is harsh parenting. They scold, hit, and they. They, they sometimes call authoritarian parenting, authoritarian dictator. 
And one parenting can be divided in two ways. One is permissive parenting. Permissive parenting sound good, but they don't put a role and they let the child do whatever they want to do. It's some, some kind of indulging children. So one parenting is not always a good one. But the one of the one of the type of all parenting is responsive parenting, which I showed in the previous slide. And this is called authoritative authoritative parenting. I think it's confusing. Authoritative parenting means that they have a rule. So long as the child keeps the rule, they are very warm and responsible. But authoritarian parenting, it's a dictator. You know, uh, uh, even though the ch children keep the rule, they will scold and punish the children. So parenting styles have a lot of effect on children's uh, QOL and resilience. Uh, this is the uh, same thing for uh, seven years old children. And QOL is a predictor, strong predictor of resilience. And quality of education, again, is a very uh, strong, uh, not a strong, um, but you know, medium range uh, uh, predictor of resilience. And here comes responsive parenting. Responsive parenting is quite important. This is the just the reverse, you know, resilience predict QL. And also non-punitive, non-harsh parenting has a positive effect on QL. So, you know, by summing up, I think parenting style has a very strong effect on children's resilience and QL. And then responsible uh, parenting is the best one. Punitive uh, parenting do harm. So this is the uh, intermediate, intermi uh, the discussion. The, I summarized the, the, the study. I'm still you know, working on this because there is so many uh, items and uh, it, it takes time. But this is the uh, interim uh, discussion. Uh, children resilience associated with the variety of child care and parenting practice. And it was demonstrated that children happiness was closely associated with their resilience. You know, it's a both election. And then, uh, uh, the although resilience might be regarded as an innate characteristic of children, it was clearly shown that it could be influenced and sh shaped by various environment and child care factors. So resilience seems to be an inner character of ch ch child development, but it can be influenced by the environment. And it is of note that quality of child care, such as the appropriate teacher support in kindergarten child care centers is one of the important predictors of promo and to promote children's resilience. So this comes the important role of ECC uh, service for the better resilience. So uh, the, I'm using the rest of the time to several specific association between resilience, QL, and other factors. So this is secure feeling about COVID-19. We asked in the questionnaire uh, about the mother's uh, secure feeling and and concern about COVID-19. And the, the question is listed in on your left column. Are you satisfied with the measures your country region has taken against the COVID-19 pandemic? The answer is very satisfied, very satisfied, very dissatisfied. And, and, and then uh, we pointed like this, very satisfied four point, fairly satisfied three point. And then the about the concern. Are you concerned about the future spread of COVID-19? And very concerned, very concerned. This uh, has a their point. And then very unconcerned. I don't care, a uh, four point. So by summing these uh, points, we can get the kind of indicator of secure feeling. And uh, we look at the relation between the secure feeding of mothers and children resi resilience and QL. 
So security and concern and satisfaction. This is the, uh, as you can see, this is the comparison of a country. You can see the difference among countries. Interestingly, in China, their security feeling is the highest. Well, you know, in China, the number of children, number of COVID-19 is very, very low, low, very low. And also the government control is very, very strong. Uh, because of that, they are very much secure and they are not uh, they are not concerned about it. But the other countries are almost the same, but in Japan, uh, I think their secure feeling of mother is lowest among any countries. And uh, the COVID-19 is almost over, but I think uh, most of them are still wearing masks because this is a reflection of our insecure feeling toward uh, the COVID-19. So Singapore, I think it's in, in, it's just average and it's good, but I think Japan, I'm a little bit concerned about this low security feeling of, of Japanese mothers. So this is the, uh, you know, I, we compare the COVID security and uh, QL and resilience. Um, I think the left, left, you know, graphs, this is a resilience level and secure feeling. And then number two is secure, secure feeling is high. And number one is security, secure feeling is low. There's a small but significant uh, difference. Those with high secure feeling tend to have a high resilience in children, but no significant difference are found uh, with respect to QL of children, no difference. And also the effect of lockdown and then the resilience QL. I think uh, in some uh, region, they experience lockdown during the time of the survey. So we look at whether there is some difference and then uh, you, uh, we can say that the resilience, there was significant difference in resilience uh, where the, there is no lockdown the secure, secure feeling is higher. It's quite you know, natural. Uh, those area with lockdown, and they experience lockdown, their secure feeling is low. This is a very uh, reasonable result, but there's no difference among the QOL in, uh, among these two, two, two lesions. This is other uh, kind of uh, uh, aspect. Uh, we, uh, when I talk about resilience, uh, the, uh, the friend, friend is very important. Also, good friend to have a good friend is very good for QL. So this is uh, this is not the number of of friends. I'm sorry. This is the number of siblings, brothers and sisters. So you can see that the number of siblings are reversely associated with resilience. So if the number of siblings are more than five the resilience goes down. As you see here, it's a kind of very uh, remarkable uh, reduction of resilience if the number of single siblings is high. Uh, QL, there is no difference between one, two, three, four siblings, but if the number of siblings more than five, their QLs go down. Well, maybe maybe housing situations and also the uh, the share of the children who got care by mothers and parents uh, might have some effect on this uh, finding. Oh, uh, this is birth order. Birth order is associated with laziness. The first, second, third is good, but if the birth order is fourth and fifth, they are resilience level is lower. Uh, I think we don't know why, but this is uh, kind of the uh, general tendency seen in eight countries. And also uh, the QOL, uh, the one, two, three, it's all right. But, you know, after fourth and fifth birth order, their QOL is getting lower. Uh, maybe among the audience, some of them are the fourth or fifth, uh, you know, their birth order, fourth or fifth or sixth. And they might answer my question why they are resilience and, and QL lower if they are born later um, in, in their family. 
in Japan, the, the average number of, of, of a sibling is maybe less than two. So uh, it is very difficult to see children whose birth order is like fourth or fifth now. Uh, well, this is household income and residence. There is some difference, you know, uh, the residence is higher uh, in middle class, interesting. And in the, if the household income is low, the residence is lower. And it is quite well known that during COVID-19, many, many parents uh, have lost their job. And that has worsened their poverty and also that has worsened the resilience of that family. Uh, the QL, uh, well, there seem to be some... I can hear someone is saying, <laughs> okay. Uh, but you know, there's no significant uh, difference uh, the, as a respect to the uh, household income and QL. And, and also mother's educational level has nothing to do with the uh, QOL. Um, and, and there's some, some, I think, statistical difference, but it's not so significant. The, I think the mother's education has little to do with the resilience and QOL of children. Uh, this is a kind of uh, very kind of confusing uh, result. This is the country comparison of the resilience, five years old in the left side and seven years old. And then from Singapore and, and, and uh, from China, we don't have the seven years old samples, uh, only uh, six uh, countries are listed. And most of the countries, there is no big difference except for uh, the, uh, the Malaysia. And there seem to be some sampling or uh, the subject type or some cultural effect on that. So now we are uh, studying why the, 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 the uh, resilience and QL of Malaysia is, is lower than other countries. But probably um, Dr. Amina is now studying the reason why uh, this is, these are low. This is the QOL. Uh, with respect to QOL, there is some dip in Malaysia, but quite comparable. So I'm very glad that QOL of children in Asian countries has been maintained in an even way. There's no big disparities uh, in the QOL of children living in this region during the pandemic. Uh, this is, we also ask the mother's satisfaction in current life. We ask uh, mothers, are you satisfied with children's, uh, satis uh, the, uh, satisfied with the current life? And we look at the association, correlation uh, between other factors. As you see, children's QOL has positive association. If children are happy, mothers are satisfied. And then, and satisfaction of COVID measures. If the government or regional uh, government has done a good job in controlling COVID-19, mothers are satisfied. And also the mothers are satisfied when quality of ECC school care and service is good. And also if mother will satisfy, if their spousal emotional support is enough, they are, are quite uh, happy and satisfied. There is some positive, there is positive relation, but I think relation between ch children resilience and mother's fatigue satisfaction is quite small. Uh, this is one of the final slide, but anyway, the, the meaning of having uh, many good friends. So this is uh, the association between resilience, QOL, and then number of friends. As you see, the, the, there is um, not big, but I think there's positive association between resilience and number of friends. QL, that is very small, but this means that if you have good friend, 
the resilience of a child is very good, probably. And then uh, the, the meaning of having friend is very important. So during COVID-19 pandemic, they cannot go to school. They cannot attend school. They, they didn't have time and, and, and chat with their, their, their peers and friends. So this might be a good adversity uh, for children uh, during the time of COVID-19. Uh, well, this is, uh, we also ask the household income changes. In many of the uh, families has suffered from the decline of their household income, but in some, they have the, enjoyed the increased uh, uh, household income. And then, uh, as you see here, those families whose uh, household income increased their resilience is higher. Well, this is quite reasonable. And then as for the QL, the household income change has nothing to do with the level of QL of the children. So this is a summary. So resilience is closely correlated with quality of life. I have, sh I have shown, shown it in many ways. Parenting attitudes and practice are predictors of resilience. High quality and quantity of ECAC service are associated with higher resilience. COVID-19 pandemic is negatively associated with resilience. Well, it's quite reasonable. Mother's concern, secure feeling against COVID-19 is correlated with children's resilience, but not with QL. There are some differences in resilience among eight countries, but not in QL. So, uh, we are coming to the last of my talk. So what we should do? So we are still analyzing the result of the survey. Uh, probably we can do something to uh, make children resilience and QL better uh, in many ways, like parenting style, providing uh, uh, high care ECC service, and then uh, fostering children's uh, environment uh, to have many to, 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 to have many friends and so forth. And there is many ways. Also, by reducing the existing adversities, as I mentioned earlier, we can, of course, uh, increase the resilience and cure of children. There are so many ways. So what we should do? There is a very interesting paper. I found it quite recently. This is a predictable hope environment may protect ch child mental health during the COVID-19 pandemic. So what is predictable hope environment? So it says, uh, you can see in, in, in the bottom, importantly, maintain a structured predictable hope environment by adherence to family routines appear to mitigate these adverse effects providing empiric basis for public health recommendation. So we need not to do some super special thing, just, you know, providing the, this is a home environment, routine home environment, eating meal together and uh, say good morning, uh, say good morning in the morning and then have family rituals and these, uh, family rituals is quite important for maintaining children's mental health. So probably we need not do something very special. Uh, of course, we should reduce uh, and eradicate adversities. But at home, we are going to uh, encourage parents to do a responsible parenting. And in kindergarten and school, we are going to provide high care uh, education and care. And the, the three, three thing is a very good, I think, measures to improve our, uh, the, our children's resilience and QL. Oh, this is the corollary. It's a conclusion. You know, the story of Mata Lynx and Bluebird, children Bluebird to this, uh, I think, uh, sister and brother, 
uh, look for uh, the, the happy bluebird. And they traveled and go to many, many places and they couldn't find it. Finally, they found the bluebird in their house. So probably the solution of, of providing better resilience and QOL is maybe somewhere near uh, our uh, everyday practice. Uh, this is uh, my kind of corollary of this talk. And this uh, survey was made possible by the collaboration of many, many things. I, 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 I don't name of them, but without their collaborations, uh, our survey uh, is not possible. And also they have now uh, proceeded to analyze their own data. And some of, most of them are, I think, uploaded in a website. Uh, you can see this is the website of Child Research Net. And uh, we have three language, uh, English, Chinese, and Japanese. And I now uh, bring uh, to English version and, and, and Chinese version. Those who have the uh, uh, smartphone, please uh, take this QR code. You can, you can read the original country report of eight countries, either in English, Chinese, and also, of course, in, in Japanese. Okay, I stop here. Thank you very much for your uh, uh, attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sakakihara. Thank you for that very uh, interesting presentation. And uh, I'm really glad to know that there was no drop in the quality of life for the children, the five-year-old children, in these Asian countries that um, you have studied, right? Yeah. Now we have about 25 minutes for questions and comments. Now, um, Professor has requested that you please type your questions into the chat box so that we can all read the questions together, right? So yeah. if you do have questions or comments, could you please type them into the chat box? Now, we already have one question, Professor, while we okay. wait for the rest uh, okay. of the audience to, to uh, respond. Mm -hmm. um, we do have one question from Charlotte. Mm -hmm. uh, she said, I love what you are sharing. They are great insights. Can I check if any children were interviewed? Were they mainly mothers? and their perspectives. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I think in order, may, in order to make the, the survey simple to analyze, this time mm. we just ask mothers. And of course, you know, we should ask mothers and fathers and other, I think, caretakers, but that will make the analysis very complicated. So uh, we dare to choose mothers as the uh, responder. And then uh, we, we didn't interview uh, children. Probably that was the next step. So as I said that in each country, uh, they are going to analyze their data. They can do like uh, interviewing or they can do some panel study or something. This is just the beginning. So okay. the, the uh, question to the answer is that, we, no, I think we didn't do uh -huh. interviews. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah, uh, yes, uh, I think there is also a quest, uh, a comment, I think, from um, Lai Yu Min. Um, thank you, Professor. I wonder if you have also considered kit screen versus Kindle instrument to determine the quality of life, as no. both are from the same German research group. Yeah, I think there's many uh, instrument, I mean, rating system for QL. We, we, we know that. So mm. the reason I, we chose the Kindle is that we uh, get used to it. You know, we are familiar mm. with that. And mm -hmm. then uh, this time we didn't do the comparison between uh, the Kindle screen and Kindle instrument. Of course, the result mm. will be uh, somewhat different. We know the limitation of using one instrument and also, mm. Uh, by translating this uh, German, mainly the uh -huh. basically German one, we sense the kind of cultural influence on the, I think, uh, QL. 
Uh, I think in some culture, there is some difference in the, how do you say, terminology and all the importance, uh, important factor in QOL. Uh, we feel that one. So if we use this uh, German uh, QOL, the, the uh, I think the self-esteem of Japanese children always is very low. Uh, probably oh. it's a kind of cultural difference. So we should be very careful about the interpretation of these internationally used standard rating system. Uh, but this time we didn't do the comparison between these two. Okay, right. Um, we have another question uh, or rather related to instrumentation or, or no, in, in, I mean, related to the study itself, the design of the study. Could mm -hmm. you share with us how participants were recruited? Okay, so I think the doing the same doing the same survey in a country is a very very difficult task. So in Japan, uh, we use both the paper questionnaire and then uh, uh, the online questionnaire system. In some countries, they exclusively use uh, online, uh, mainly, uh, what is the name? Very famous one, <laughs> I forget. Uh, so uh, we use both uh, method. So it, it depends on the, I think, local people who distribute the questionnaire. In Japan, uh, four or five years old, we, uh, we distribute, mailed uh, the paper questionnaire to the parents. And interestingly, the use of online questionnaire is, I think, is quite retarded in Japan. I think in I Asian see. countries, you are going ahead of us. So we use both paper and then online uh, uh -huh. questionnaire. I see. Okay, right. Uh, uh, for, is... recru for recruitment, it's a uh, kind of convenient recruitment. It's okay. the, not the stratified one. We are asking yeah. the local people whether or not they, they are interested in that. When we use the online, uh, online I think, uh, questionnaire, it's, uh, I think, uh, it's, uh, how do you say, um, voluntarily, those who voluntarily uh -huh. Uh, participate in, in the question, questionnaire are uh, recruited. Okay. Okay. So there are two questions related to um, school and, and what can be done in school. Uh, there's one from Rupa Aurora. Um, this person has said, we know that friends are important in children's life. How can preschools foster this? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a question direct to me. Please ask Dr. Samchiwa about that. I think this, this is a very important thing. Yes, I mean, yes. the relationship uh, of, 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 of among peers is very important. Sometimes they are fighting and they are fighting, sometimes bullying other kids. So the how to, I think, uh, develop and foster friendship is a very, very important issue. But I think that is the, probably, yes, uh, from... the, the, uh, the question should be direct to someone who is specialized in pedagogy rather than right. me. Right, right. Would, would anyone in the, in the midst want to respond to this? Anyone in the audience would like to say something? Okay, if not, then we can go on, all right? Or you can key in your responses to the, uh, into the chat box if you would like to do that, right? So um, there is also a comment uh, from somebody from Indonesia. She said, I'm Yunia from Indonesia. May I know how did you measure the effect of ECEC or care or school? Did it involve teachers? Is there any description about the kind of service that can affect the children's resilience? So we didn't look at that, but you know, I think the uh, questionnaire to the mothers about their, I think, perception of uh -huh. the ECC care, 
uh, uh -huh. that the child is wearing okay. uh, there is maybe uh five or ten questions so we are going to analyze which uh, factor which uh, question is most closely related to the uh, 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 mo most effective we will know that uh -huh. but you know we have not done that analysis yet so okay. maybe 10 questions about they are asking about the the quality and service of, of ECC right so maybe some of them are more important than others so we uh -huh. have not done that analysis as yet, but I think this is from Indonesia. Professor right. Sophie uh, has, uh, you know, collected information and she has all the information. You can ask what is the situation in Indonesia. Uh, I don't know whether uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Sophie is here, but I think she can uh, give you a correct answer uh, on, on that respect. Okay. Maybe the fact the, the that is different among countries yeah all right yeah thank you professor there are other comments um there were people who have keyed in thank you professor uh thank you professor yuichi for this wonderful sharing all right are there other questions uh or comments Hi, Dr. Sam. Can I trouble uh, you to show us the QR code again? Oh, okay. The last slide. Thank you very oh, okay. much. Sure, okay. sure. Thank you. Thank uh, you. you here. Uh, yeah. Let me. Okay. Uh, Wait a moment. Somewhere. I think it was the last slide, yeah. Can I see that? Not yet. Not yet? Yeah. Okay, I, I should upload it, right? Uh, wait a moment. I'm a little confused. Uh, Yep. Mm. Uh, uh, here. Yeah. Right. Okay. Can you, you see? Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Welcome. Well, as I said, that you know the the country report from eight country report uh, uploaded yeah. in that website. And then you can see uh, quite easily either in Chinese or English or, or, or Japanese, of course. Okay, right. Are there, are there further questions? Okay, there's one more question from yeah. Melissa Yo. Uh, good afternoon, fellow educators and Professor Yuichi. May I know if differences in gender was taken into consideration during the research? Well, I think, you know, of course, you know, we, uh, we look at the difference among gender. We have uh -huh. some, some difference, but, you know, I have not shown it because, you know, we are still on the process of analyzing it. I see. For example, the resilience to seem to be higher among female. Okay. Resilience. I, I guess, okay. and also quality of life, there might be some difference. So I think, you know, gender has some effect on it. Not much, but there is really a solid difference uh, between two genders. Conductive. I think there are... No further questions, but there's a response to the earlier uh, question on the uh, quality of the conducive environment in educational settings. Charlotte has keyed in uh, this comment. It centers around what Professor shared about safe spaces, psychological, uh, psychologically safe spaces that build trust and relationships between students and teachers and allied educators to start with. 
Thank you for that, Charlotte. Thank you. Thank you very much for good information. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. So are there any further questions? Um, there appears to be no further questions or comments in the chat box. Uh, now, so um, can I take it that there are no further questions or comments? If there are no further questions, then thank you very much for your participation in this public lecture. But before you leave, we would appreciate it very much if you could actually go into the website and also or, or scan this QR code to give us feedback. Thank okay. you very much, everyone. Okay. Thank you for your participation. Thank you and very thank much. Thank you, Professor Yoichi. Yeah. Thank you very I'm, much. I, yeah, I'm keen, keen, looking forward to see you face to face sometime in the near future. Right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, yeah. everyone. Thank you. Thank you.